Hey, welcome. We are live at Training Magazine. We're in Orlando, uh, Florida, the land of the mouse. We are so excited to be here. I'm here with my very good friend, family member, colleague, Keith Lillico, who uh, is here for the conference, but then he'll also be hanging out at our Sententia Gamification booth where you can play the game. Can you aim better than a stormtrooper? Uh, you can do our dark side match mo game. We've got jello shots and Wookie cookie. So come on by, you got to play to win. But we're here talking with Keith today because he is one of our Gamacon 48V. Uh, he's worked side by side with us to produce these virtual events from the day we started them. And he is here to talk with us as a pre-conference micro session about the new role he took about 12, 18? Uh, 18 months ago. 18 about. months ago with a very small pharmaceutical company, really small, probably, but uh, Merck. So, of course, Merck Pharmaceuticals, which uh, has a global presence. And I wanted Keith to talk with us today because he was brought into Merck because of his experience in L&D and his education and his skill set, but also because there was an interest and an attraction to bringing gamified game-based learning into the mix and how they could use it. The other thing I want to make sure and talk with Keith about, especially for those of you who are thinking of continuing education, is that Keith really studied the science of brain-based learning and how to retain and apply and the best ways to study. And how many masters do you have now? I have two now. I have two, two masters, masters and two fellows. And it took you how long to do? Uh, my MBA was four months and my MED was two months. So I know it sounds incredulous, but he had a, he studied, he found a way that he could, and he still worked a full-time job while you yes. were doing that. Yeah. So he was still working a full-time job. So there are ways that we can really make learning effective and stick and get us where we want to get to. So where should we start with the, your, your studies or uh, with Merck? Let's start with the studies because okay. we can, we can circle back to the Merck because that might be a little bit longer. Okay. So what was, tell us the secret. Uh, the secret was one, I will be honest, the secret is to read your rubrics. You know, that that's the first trick, you know, don't do more work than you have to. So many people I've worked with, you know, who are working on degrees and wanted me to help them want to make sure everything is right. And the secret I told everybody is at the end of the day, GPA doesn't matter. Now I didn't fail. I never failed a test or a paper, but GPA doesn't matter. Follow what you are asked to do. And that goes same thing with L and D, right? So if our learners are doing all this extra stuff because we put all this extra stuff in there, it's ineffective. Right. You know, we're going to make a 12 hour training that could be three. So that's a simple one. But to get more into the brain base, I used a lot of the trigger type methods that you can do. And there's a lot of tricks like associating smells to certain subjects. So if I was now it was proctored. So they watch you spin your camera around and make sure it's on your desk. But they're not going to say nothing about a candle. So when I would study this particular subject, I would burn this candle. Huh. And what it does is it triggers in your brain with that smell and starts the memory recall process from those things. Wow. That is really interesting. And there was something about the pacing of it. Like you did... Didn't you have so much time between when you studied or there was Yeah, so the program was set up to where I had a wait turnaround time for when I turned in papers. So it would be like a four to eight hour turnaround before I could get the paper back and say, did you pass? Did you not pass? And instead of sitting idle and waiting, as soon as I turned in that paper, I started on the next course and started studying. And while I may be ahead in that course and have to circle back to the other one, you just didn't stop. You know, when you sit idle, that's when you run out of steam. Right. You keep up the pace. You keep going at the pace you're going. And you don't know any different. And I'm not going to lie. It was everybody's like, oh, two months. That's crazy. But it was still studying five and six hours a night mm -hmm. and 12 to 14 hours on the weekends. So right. it was no cakewalk. I'm not a genius. It's like, oh, I know everything. But if you keep your pace, you're doing real good. And actually, I had a newborn during that time, too. Oh, wow. No. Yeah, no, it was that young wow. at that time. Wow. So when you think about 
Did you go into the program knowing I want to accelerate this? I don't want this to take a year and a half, two years. I want to get this done. So I did for multiple reasons, uh, particularly with my MBA. Um, the MBA it was set up to where you paid how, a certain flat rate for however much you got done in six months. Um, my goal was six months. I didn't want to pay for another semester of school. And once I got rolling, I saw how fast I can tear through it. And that's how I did it. My other side was trying to get into a new position. I didn't want to spend two years to move into a new position. So I knew that I wanted to get done as quick as possible so that I could move on in my career. So part of it was career driven. Part of it was money driven. Yeah. So the interesting thing about Keith, Keith, I won't mention any company names, but Keith, so he has a couple of masters, a couple of fellows. He's a gamification master craftsman. He's certified. He works uh, with our team internally, helping us to uh, evaluate programs. And so he's got a lot on his plate. Plus he has two newborn twins now that are six months, four months, four months. But old. I'm getting sleep while I'm here. I can't believe how bad it is. <laughs> oh, wow. But when, so with all of this, what happened with Keith is that he was in a position where they felt like he was overqualified for it, that, you know, you're, we don't need someone with your education and your skill level. How would you like to hear that? So Keith was let go from that as they right-sized the L&D department in that company. But the very cool thing was that because of the network that we have at Sententia, and the connections he had made, because, you know, you can't build your network when you need your network and you're only as strong as your network. So you got to build that network ahead of time. But you had job offers. that. So what happened was we were at TechLearn in New Orleans, oh, which right. will be in New Orleans again this year. Yeah. And I was laid off a week before the conference. And I remember calling Monica and I'm like, hey, I don't think I can make it. Um, she's like, no, you need to be down here. You need to be down here. So I was going to drive from St. Louis, actually north of St. Louis, to New Orleans one highway the whole way, if anyone knows, 55 for 400 miles. And I was going to sleep in the casino parking lot in my car because I knew that if you gamble for 30 minutes a day, you get 24 <laughs> hours of free parking. But I ended up getting Airbnb and stuff. Everybody was great for me. But the moment I walked in the door, people from our network walked up to me and said, we're going to find you a job before you leave. And I think I left with three or four interviews Interview set. Yeah. And actually had an interview while I was there. And That's it wasn't, right. wasn't even small companies. We're talking major, big marketplaces you would know online, setting up interviews with me before I even walked out the door. And so what happened was actually like, you know, when, when something like that happens, it's devastating, right? So fortunately this event was the next week and that Keith was able to come. So he, he was able to get out there with people who really care about him and his success. So what happened though, was that Keith continued to leverage his education and his skill set and made a few job changes over this whole COVID shutdown. And that's how he ended up at Merck with a really nice position. What's your title? At so Merck? I'm a associate director of global learning and development. And then that's my internal title because that's what companies do these days. And my external title is learning experience architect. And so what does that mean in um, layman's terms? Yeah, so I've given up the good old fashioned hands to keyboard development roles that I love so much. And now I'm literally stepping back of when the thing comes in and goes, what does this program look like? You know, what are the modalities? Does it start with a pretest? Okay, what is that pretest? Is it a simulation? Is it a this or that? Okay, now they go from there, there's another decision point. Do they do an ILT? Do they do instructor led? What does that look like? And then you just literally build the learning journey is 90% of my work is building expansive learning journeys. And, and yeah, and that's one of the things I was just working with some, uh, a group of women over this uh, week who were working on their executive presence because they want to move more into leadership roles. And that's one of the things that I always you know, I always caution against, it's not right or wrong, it's just different, but the further up you move in your career path, the less you'll do what actually brought you into that career in the first place. So like I could go down rabbit holes of design for days, but it's not what I'm supposed to be spending my time on now and neither are yeah. you, right? I so, don't even have Storyline on my computer anymore. Wow, yeah. I had to beg, borrow and steal to get Adobe on my computer. <laughs> so at Merck, I know you did a big initiative for them about gamification. What what did they ask you for? What did you develop? Yeah. So the initial ask coming in was, 
hey, we need you to meet with the other architects and figure out what a badging and credentialing program looks like. And coming in with my background in L&D and talking to the other architects, we were missing the mark completely with what we were looking at. And it was great ideas, but there was no strategy behind it. It was, hey, this is what we like, but okay, how do we implement that? What does that look like? What are the parameters? Things like that there. So we worked as a team and started to build out a plan and that evolved into a full gamification strategy for the global learning and development team. So our slide deck is now, I'd say about 128 slides long of just strategy. And it covers everything down to the psychology that we're applying to it, to what is the definition of each mechanic or at least a lot of them. Uh, what preferred vendors do we think fit into our tech stack? I mean, think about planning any major initiative within an organization. You know, it could be you're starting a new compensation style, your new benefits rolling out. We took the exact same approach to gamification uh, because previously at Merck, it was cobbled together in the sense of someone like this vendor and someone like this vendor. And we had this LMS doing this and this LMS doing that. And we had to find a way to make it cohesive so that it was the seamless feeling across the entire learning process rather than I have to jump here to do this and I have badges here and I have badges here and I have badges there. What do I do with them? Right, right. Well, that's really good. So what do you see uh, as like the future of gamified game-based learning at Merck? Do you think that it will be uh, implemented to like what degree? How would it be used primarily, do you think? Um, we're full in. So our gamification will not probably look a way a lot of people feel like gamification is. We're not crafting these long, beautiful narratives. We're using truly the psychology behind it. You know, most people won't probably feel it as gamification. They're not going to realize, oh, this is a gamified process, but we're taking the mechanics and burying them in there to give them those dopamine hits so they keep learning. So we're not creating games. Good. We're we're literally using the psychology from games and working them into our process. So they're a part of everyday life. Yeah. So that's really good because at Sententia, a part of our model is the narrative, the storyline. And we realize that that's not like the only model. It's just the model we follow. And it's, it's greatly because of the strong background that Jonathan Peters brings to the table with his writing background and the use of narrative and his understanding of how stories help us to learn and retain that learning. So that's part of why we include it. But I'm willing to have the conversation that gamification doesn't really even have a narrative in it. And maybe that's just more like game-based learning. But that's another day. But I can see that um, that Merck using it could be really effective. And really, it's most effective when it is seamless like that, where no one's announcing, hey, we're going to play a game now. People just engage with it and want to keep engaging with it because they are getting the dopamine or oxy, you know, whatever the the hormones are that are, you know, making them feel like they want to continue that journey. They feel good. They feel pride. They feel connection and all those different uh, feel good endorphins to do that. So Really good, Keith. I'm excited for you and your journey. So I look forward to seeing some things. I know a lot of it's proprietary and probably won't be able to see much of it, but I'd love to hear how the journeys develop to as much as you can share. Cool. And I know I wouldn't ask you to break any kind of confidence of at all. So, all right. Well, that's it for today from uh, Training Magazine Conference. So we're at the... Disney Coronado Springs Resort. Did you know that there are hidden Mickeys here at this resort? There's at least 12 of them. So if you happen to be watching this and you are here, if you grab a picture of those, bring them to booth 210 in the expo hall, and we have uh, valuable prizes for you. So look for those hidden Mickeys while you're here in Disney. If you're not here in Disney, we wish you were with us, but we hope that you'll join us February 26th through 28th at Gamecon 48V. It's all online, 48 hours straight, 
around the globe two times. Of course, uh, I have a blog already written. I just need to get it posted on how you can get the most out of those 48 hours, what you can do to make sure that you're learning and retaining and taking care of yourself along the way. So I'll make sure and get that blog posted this week. But we're just delighted to have you join us there and learn more about how you can use gamified and game-based learning within your organization. Keith, thank you so much. Yeah, I look forward you. to I a couple it. of days. It's going to be Who fun are you cheering for tomorrow night? Uh, Kansas City. Kansas, so far, it's I, I'm, a mid, I'm a Midwest boy. So Everyone I've talked to is the Chiefs. Yeah. I, I was born and raised in PA, so looks well, like I'm... Um, I'm based out of PA, so I'm, oh, you I'm, are. I'm yeah. the person that nobody likes within the organization right now when we get on top of football. Uh, wait, are they in Pennsylvania or New Jersey? Uh, our home base is in New Jersey, but our largest footprint is in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes, so I'm I'm not a popular person right now. All right, all right. Well, we'll see you again tomorrow. We have another guest speaker tomorrow, so I'll make sure and let you know when that is and time in the time. And we'll be back here again for another pre-con micro session. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye.